This is Andrea Beish. Beish is a PhD graduate student in agronomy at Iowa State University. She wants to know if planting overwinter cover crops helps to make corn and soybeans more resilient to variable weather. Her research is part of the USDA NIFA Corn Based Cropping Systems CAP. This project is sometimes called the Corn CAP, short for Coordinated Agricultural Project, and is also known by its informal name, Sustainable Corn. This project includes hundreds of researchers and farmers across the Midwest. So specifically, I'm studying cover crops as a climate adaptation tool. Projections for the Midwest tell us we should expect more rainfall variability, so more floods and droughts in the future. So we're thinking about, in that context, what are the ways that we can make the landscape a better weather buffer? That's where our research with cover crops comes in. So we're using field data to test a model. It's really just a computer platform that can predict a lot of different things like what are the long-term uh, benefits and impacts of a cover crop. So we're thinking about trying to answer questions about ways that we maximize the environmental benefits of cover crops while minimizing the impact that they have on corn and soybean yields. So how are we going about doing this? We are taking crop and soil samples from a long-term research site. It's a corn soybean system where the researchers have grown a winter rye cover crop for the last 15 years. So it's a nice long-term record of how cover crops impact corn and soybeans. For the last two years during the growing season, we measured the growth of corn and soybeans every two to three weeks. We then separated the plants by the different parts, leaves, stems, and pods, and corn ears, so the grain, in the lab. We measured the biomass of each part, we took the leaf area measurements of the plant, and then looked at the composition, the carbon and nitrogen in each of the different parts. So we want to see if there are differences in growth or nutrient allocation of the corn and soybeans when a cover crop is included in that system. So we're also very interested in the soil dynamics at our field site. So I have some soil samples here that we took earlier in the fall. Basically what we're looking at with these is to see if there are differences between soil texture and soil carbon. And these are to confirm some results that we found last summer. We took intact soil cores and had those samples measured for uh, different available water to the plant at various pressures. And so we're gonna compare those results to the carbon and the soil texture, and also use this data to confirm that our model is doing a good job matching what we actually see out in the field. So we use the field data to improve the model predictions. And using the model is important because it allows us to extend results into the longer term. That way we can help farmers understand not only what happens in one year, but what happens to corn and soybean yields over many years if you grow a cover crop. Once we've tested the model and we know it does a good job matching the field data, then that's when the fun part starts. We get to answer questions such as how much erosion can a cover crop prevent over many years? How much organic matter can we build over time? How does the cover crop affect soil water in particularly wet or dry years? So using both the field data and the model, we're answering questions about if the use of a cover crop makes our landscape a better weather buffer. Beish's goals for her model predictions are to answer farmers' questions about using cover crops, to help them balance their concerns about cover crops with the potential long-term benefits, and to make Midwest farmlands more resilient to variable and extreme weather. Mm -hmm.